Class D airspace has a tower as indicated by the blue color on this chart and is depicted by a circle of blue dashes. The airspace radius from the center of the airport to the edge of the airspace is approximately 4.4 miles but can vary some. The airspace starts at the surface and rises approximately 2,500 feet above ground level. If you look at the chart, you see that the elevation for the Spirit of St. Louis Airport, KSUS, is 463 feet. If you add 2,500 feet to that, you will get 2,963 feet MSL. Notice that the chart has three zero in brackets, which means the top of the airspace is 3,000 feet MSL, as 296.3 feet MSL is rounded up to the nearest hundreds of feet above sea level. Weather minimums for Class D are 3 miles visibility with 1,000 feet above clouds, 500 feet below clouds, and 2,000 feet laterally. If you are taking off or landing, you will need at least a 1,000 foot ceiling. If conditions are less than 3 miles visibility or less than 1,000 feet ceiling or both, the airport will have the rotating beacon on during the day indicating such. You will need to request special VFR in such conditions. See that video for further details. Keep in mind that Class D only exists when the tower is in operation. When the tower is closed, the airport may revert to Class E or Class G airspace. See the Class E and Class G videos for further details. An asterisk next to the tower frequency indicates that the tower operates part-time. The details for tower operations for KSUS can be seen in the airport facility directory. Here we see next to airspace colon class D and also by tower that the tower is in service from 1200 to 0500 Zulu which is the same as coordinated universal time UTC and corresponds to 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Central Standard Time or 7 a.m. to midnight Central Daylight Savings Time. Outside of those times, the airport reverts to Class E airspace. If you fly over or around the airspace, you do not need to maintain communications with ATC. However, whenever you are within the airspace, you will need to do so. To learn about departing from a towered airport, you can watch the taxiing series of videos and the normal takeoff, cruise climb, and possibly transitioning to straight and level from a climb videos as you might do that before exiting the airspace. On the landing side, there are a series of videos you can watch to help you with landing at a towered airport, including videos on door rounds and entering and flying a pattern at towered airports. If you look at the chart, you can see CT, which means control tower. The frequency next to CT is the tower frequency, which for KSUS is 124.75. Should you ever need to fly through the airspace, you would say one of the following, depending on what you want to do. If you plan to fly directly over the field, remember to fly at least 500 to 1,000 feet above the traffic pattern altitude and make your request like the following. Spirit Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo, requests to cross the field from north to south at 2,500 feet. It is good practice to fly 90 degrees to the runway and fly over the threshold of the active runway because planes are lower there as they are either landing or taking off. You might even hear the tower say, Cessna November 2095 Kilo, Cleared as requested, cross the upwind end of the active runway at 2,500 feet and report when clear. If you are not flying over the field, you might say Spirit Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo is 10 miles to the north, request transition from north to south at 2,500 feet. The tower will then respond with Cessna November 2095 Kilo, cleared as requested, report when clear. Because the tower asked you to report when clear, when you get beyond the border of the airspace, you let the tower know by saying, Spirit Tower, 9 or 5 Kilo is clear to the south. When you have a satellite airport, such as the Spadero Airport, which is within Gabreski Tower's Class D airspace, you must maintain communications with the primary airport when entering Class D airspace, 
when you wish to land at the satellite airport. Your initial communications might sound something like this. Gabreski Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo is 10 miles to the northeast with information Sierra, landing at Spadero. The tower will acknowledge you and provide traffic information but will not provide clearance to land as the primary airport does not have jurisdiction over the satellite airport. When taking off, you try to reach the primary airport tower from the ground if you are able to do so. If you can, you make the request like this. Gabreski Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo, ready for takeoff at Spadero, VFR to the north. If you can't reach the primary tower from the ground, you will contact them as soon as you can after takeoff like this. Gabreski Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo, off from Spadero through 500, climbing to 3000 VFR to the north. In either case, the tower will acknowledge the call and give traffic info. Once you get outside of Class D airspace, although some teach it, you are not required to ask for a frequency change. One thing to note is sometimes Class G or E can temporarily become Class D for air shows and fly-ins. It is your responsibility to keep abreast of this information via notices and letters to airmen. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.